Dr. Surian, thank you yes. so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Um, I guess I first have to start off by asking you your definition mm. of moderation or being a moderate. I think being respectful to mm. the differences among us and between us and recognize that everybody has the right to be on her own or on his own. Mm. And I think, uh, as the Prime Minister of Malaysia said on the first day, every religion, every civilizational community uh, has recognized that. And uh, it has been a, a way in which ASEAN mm. has developed, has evolved, yes. because we are managing our diversity, tremendous diversity mm -hmm. here from uh, Every, every angle that you want to look at, mm. religion, culture, values, historical background, <laughs> language, ethnic, um, every, every way you want to look at the region, it's diverse. Uh, it's not only ten, but it's hundreds and it's uh, mm. maybe hundreds of thousands. Uh, so we have to live in this world of diversity and uh, here in ASEAN is, a, is I think, a, a micro Cosmo, mm -hmm. microcosm of, uh, of the global community. More and more, we have to uh, work with others, we have to live with others, we have to uh, cooperate with others without the appreciation of and respect for the diversity among us is going to be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I, I think moderation requires a sense of humility, mm -hmm. a sense of respect, and a sense of accommodation that you are not alone, that your views may not be perfect, it's not the only view, others may have the right to express uh, different views yes. from yours, and you respect it. Mm. I think the one area where ASEAN stands out in moderation is its reluctance to use military you know, intervention. Mm. Um, but some people, some perhaps its critics, mm. say that uh, the group operates more as a trading group than mm. an actual political one. Is this a fair assumption or what are your thoughts on this? Well, we are trying to work on three mm. uh, areas we call three pillars. Political insecurity, but it is very difficult. Mm. The diversity that we have, difference in norms, in uh, governance, so it's sensitive, it's difficult. Economic and trade and investment are areas that probably we can pursue more effectively together, in right. spite of the differences, mm. because you need to produce, you need to trade, you need to consume. Uh, uh, so you see more uh, activities in that area. But then in order to evolve as a community, for the first pillar, political insecurity, second pillar, economic, you need a third pillar. And that pillar is socio-cultural. Right. That's where education, mm. where issues of health, I mean, health in Malaysia is very much related to health in the rest mm -hmm. of ASEAN because a lot of these problems don't require visa to right, travel, yes. <laughs> to spill over, uh, you know, trafficking of uh, human beings, mm. of drugs, degradation of the environment, mm. you know, uh, whatever happened in Kalimantan, whatever is happening in Sumatra, I mean, you all, we all, uh, in southern Thailand too, uh, will be impacted upon. Mm. So, uh, in the areas of socio-cultural, uh, arts, culture, linguistics, education, um, even the environment, we need to work together mm -hmm. in order to um, prepare a solid foundation, a firmer foundation, for cooperation in other areas. So uh, it, it's, it's true that you can feel more uh, activities going on in the economic areas, but right. uh, in order to be successful as a community, mm. which we aspire for together, yeah. uh, we need to work on all fronts. So what would you say then has been ASEAN's best achievement thus far when it comes to dealing with certain conflicts in the region that we've seen well, in the The fact past. that we could um, somehow uh, contain mm. the conflicts from Spreading. Spreading or from flaring up. I mean, uh, Malaysia has issues with other countries, mm. territorial issues. Uh, Thailand has problem, you know, with uh, neighbors, with, certainly with Cambodia. But the fact that we could somehow contain and, and make sure that the region is ret relatively at peace compared mm -hmm. to other parts of the world, and uh, it's a strong ingredient for trade and for investment from outside, for cooperation on other areas, particularly economic. 
uh, I think that's a high degree of uh, achievement, mm -hmm. and it's recognized around the world. Otherwise, uh, you know, the U.S. and Russia would not want to come right. into the process. Yeah. Uh, EAS, East mm -hmm. Asia Summit, mm -hmm. uh, Kuala Lumpur is the birthplace in 2005, and we've been working on ASEAN Plus 6 mm. for the last five years. The sixth year, last November, in Bali, under the chairmanship of Indonesia, Russia and the United States wanted to come in, and we admitted them. Mm -hmm. uh, the European Union is knocking on our door. So, I mean, uh, the success, a series of success that we have achieved mm -hmm. uh, are not minimum, are not right. minimal, cannot be ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to project ourselves onto the global community through cooperation, through coordination and integration. So I think, uh, I think growth is, is very, very apparent. Mm. 6.5 for the last 20 years. Some countries are more than that. Some countries are less than that, but on the average. And we've been able to absorb the shocks from the outside better than other regions and we have rebounded out right. to uh, to perform at the level even higher than before mm. the crisis that's you know uh, that's a quite an achievement yeah. and we are sitting in between the two giant uh, emerging mm. uh, markets china and india mm. and we are taking advantage of that we are on the supply lines into both if both are factories we are on the supply lines, mm. uh, parts and ingredients into those factories. So uh, that's recognized. And I think we have to play this role very, very well. And in playing that role, a high degree of moderation, right. a high degree of humility mm. that we are not going to impose on others. And we want others to respect our agenda and our, uh, our priorities uh, and uh, so far, others have come around and said, okay, we'll let you lead. That's mm -hmm. the centrality of ASEAN. We can only lead through consensus. We can only lead when others agree that we are capable of leading. Right. And I think that's uh, a great achievement for any region in the world. Mm. And I suppose we also look to you know, others for examples as well. But, yeah. uh, you mentioned very briefly now the... European Union. Mm. Now, when we look at them and they operate as a block themselves, right? what can we learn from their financial breakdown? I have always said the European Union is our inspiration, mm. but not our model. Right. Uh, you know, the monetary union that they have, uh, have uh, come together is now proving to be a very, very difficult challenge mm. for them. I understand 14 trillion U.S. dollars have been wasted through this uh, uncertainty and problems that mm. they're having. Um, that's an enormous amount of, mm -hmm. of wealth that is being uh, sucked into the, um, the, the problem, right. the issue. So uh, we, we don't have the idea of one currency on the table. Mm -hmm. We have learned, or we have been watching very, very closely, and uh, we have never had any idea that we would want one currency. If anything, the region is going to evolve incrementally, slowly. Two or three currencies are going to be important in the region, but not one designed for the region mm. as the euro. So uh, I think we are learning a lot, and we are not going to become a union. Mm. Uh, we don't have a constitution, we have a charter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we I think we accommodate each other, we help each other, we encourage each other to move along, but uh, we don't require that you have to achieve a certain standard before you're coming into the ASEAN community. Uh, we rather use geographical uh, uh, definition. Right. If you are in Southeast Asia, you have the right to belong, uh, but we also expect you to conform to certain aspirations, mm. certain visions that we have for ourselves. But as far as the internal uh, uh, governance and uh, affairs, it's up to you, but make sure that integration also requires a certain level of coordination among us. So we have set up monitoring office in Jakarta. Mm -hmm. We have set up a, a research office, economic research office in Singapore to look at the way in which member states are conducting right. their very internal affairs. Mm. But integration would require that your internal affairs could spill over to me yes. tomorrow. Yeah. So, 
uh, let's be more open to each other. Mm. This is not meant to interfere, but it is meant to help each other with maybe advance warning, with uh, some some suggestions, some advice that you are probably taking a lot of risk on that particular one, and you're going to drag us down mm. altogether. It's not interference, right. but more of a uh, cooperation, preventive cooperation mm. for to, to avoid um, you know, more problems right. for all of us. And one of the member states you know, that has recently come to the attention of the world, really, is because of its reforms and you know, change in governance, yeah. is Myanmar. Yes. How do you see uh, Myanmar's future? How do you see it growing within the ASEAN? Group? Well, I think we have to take some pride and some mm. credit in helping Myanmar to come along in the process. And I don't know if you realize it, Myanmar was admitted under the chairmanship yes. of Malaysia in 1997. Mm. Uh, and since then, you know, the world has been um, rather critical of ASEAN. Yes. And ASEAN has been delivering this criticism, this expectation into for uh, Myanmar. And uh, slowly they have been uh, changing, uh, you know, not to the satisfaction. The speed certainly was not, has not been satisfactory to a lot of people. But we've been trying to say that, look, it, it will take some time for Myanmar to evolve, to transform. Mm. Uh, we have to respect the process and the speed that they are taking. In the end, you know, they will come out OK. And that has been the road, common road of ASEAN. Right. We all started with uh, being a rather authoritarian, mm. if you look back in the past 40, 45 years. Military coup mm -hmm. d'etat, you know, one dominant party, very, very strong. Um, you know, the space for liberty and for freedom has been rather restricted, mm. but we gradually uh, opening up. So prosperity in economic development and opening up of uh, the governance system mm. has been the, a common road for all the ASEAN member states and we still have a long way to go for right. some of us, but at least we are on that road. Myanmar is, is one. Mm. And now the global community is coming behind ASEAN and said, okay, now that you have agreed that Myanmar can lead ASEAN in the year 2014, mm -hmm. we also want to join on this uh, experiment with you the U.S. Secretary of State went in, uh, uh, the Japanese uh, Foreign Minister went in, Foreign Secretary of the U.K. went in, um, Foreign Minister of France, a lot of people are going in. Yeah. But at least we should realize that there is a question, where does ASEAN stand mm. on this issue? If, if Myanmar has not been part of the ASEAN mm -hmm. family, they would not have to ask that question. Yeah. And the issue would be, what would China and India uh, react right. to this opening up of Myanmar? Mm. Uh, would it lead to conflict? Uh, who would mediate? Mm -hmm. Who would be the buffer? Now ASEAN is that mechanism, right. trying to balance the various conflicting powers mm. being projected into Myanmar. But everybody is asking, where does ASEAN stand on right. this issue? Because ASEAN has been there all along. All along. Myanmar knows this, and mm. the global community knows that. So where does ASEAN stand? On Myanmar? Yeah, on Myanmar. Well, uh, encouraging it mm. to, to open up. Mindful of the fact that there is a diversity in ASEAN. Yeah. I mean, while we are asking for Myanmar to open up, to adopt a democratic process, to respect human rights, the rest also have work to do, mm. and we are not perfect. But at least we could encourage Myanmar to move along the path of opening reconciliation inside to the point where now uh, uh, the global community is rather comfortable, rather convinced, mm. rather confident that it is going to be sustained. The strategy for ASEAN now is whatever positive step that Myanmar makes, ASEAN will be there, be there to make sure that it's not going to roll back, right. to make sure that it's not going to be a reversal mm. of that development. So you will see ASEAN is engaging, you will see ASEAN is offering uh, our support, moral support, whatever support that Myanmar would need on this experiment that they are embarking upon, short of 
direct interference. Right. Mm. Okay. And ASEAN aside, you know, we've, you mentioned this earlier that the U.S. is looking our way, mm -hmm. you know, the Asia-Pacific region. Mm -hmm. What is your stand on the current policy shift in the Obama administration towards the Asia-Pacific? It's a recognition of the realities that mm -hmm. are occurring in the region. Uh, during the second summit between the ASEAN leaders and uh, the U.S. leader, Mr. Obama, mm -hmm. in New York at this, on the sideline of the U.N. in 2010. Mr. Obama opened his remark at the meeting uh, like this. Uh, if we need to get out of, if we want to get out of our own economic crisis, mm -hmm. we need to export more, we need to sell more. Right. We look around, where are the consumers, where is the market, it's you. Mm. In Southeast Asia, in ASEAN, in East Asia. So it's pretty much a recognition of the truth of the fact that right. of the realities that here is where the action is, mm. and uh, if you want to engage, uh, you will have to come. But the U.S. also has to be uh, reminded that this is not a vacuum. Mm. There are other players. There are other powers. There are other players that in the region already, you know, working already cooperating in the ASEAN process, an extra ASEAN plus process, and believe it or not, the, the, the U.S. respects that. The U.S. recognizes us as a fulcrum of emerging architecture right. in the region. And uh, I think uh, we are expected to play that role. Uh, we are given that mm -hmm. role. We call that the ASEAN centrality. Um. But with that, you know, you could say I guess our relationship has begun um, just with e the economies mm. of Southeast Asia or the Asia-Pacific mm. region. Uh, but we've also got the eye on the fact that the U.S. has placed troops in North Australia, mm. perhaps according to some analysts eyeing China. Uh, the question here is two-pronged. One, uh, what are your thoughts on the rise of China? Could it be an Asian superpower? And if so, will the relationship with the U.S. continue as is uh, U.S.-China relations, or could it perhaps result in conflict? Well, that's the challenge for ASEAN. Mm. Uh, we are the owner of this forum, of this platform, mm -hmm. of this process and this uh, system. Uh, East Asia is different from Europe in one uh, respect, and there are many, many areas that we are different. And that is, there is no one common institution or forum or mm -hmm. system that could somehow resolve potential conflicts among us and between us, as opposed to Europe. Right. Uh, it's only ASEAN that is playing this role. Mm. Uh, so when the U.S. comes, the U.S. will have to look through ASEAN at the engagement that ASEAN is having with and at the uh, other players uh, who are already here. And, uh, you know, it is, again, a recognition of the fact that when, when you want to be here, re-engage in the region, you want to make sure that the region is at peace, at, uh, that it's stable. If ASEAN, Southeast Asia, and East Asia are becoming more important to the world, and we are more important to the world than 10 years ago, than 15 years ago, uh, when we had our own crisis in 1997, mm -hmm. we were not as influential. Mm -hmm. We are not a big player. Now we are, because mm -hmm. the whole world is going through problems. Uh, for that, for us, to continue to be stable, to be secure, to be peaceful. Other countries, other powers from outside would like to make sure that they can have a contribution into that. And we have to look at it with open-mindedness. If we want to be important to the world and recognize for that, right. it has to be an open region that the mm -hmm. world can also feel comfort in the way we do things. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. has come in and tried to project itself on the landscape, uh, well, as I said earlier, uh, the, the U.S. will have to recognize that this is not a vacuum. Yeah. And China will have to recognize that the fact that we are becoming more important to the world, we attract attention from around the world. And China, too, will mm. have to accommodate the differences and the priorities and the agenda from uh, the rest of the world into the region. Uh, this is not a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, this is not an isolated right. region. 
it is an open region. Everybody has an interest mm. in whatever we do, in whatever we achieve, or we fail. So mm. um, I think if we adopt that kind of attitude, then we will feel more comfortable. Our, uh, I think, objective is not to let any power to come in and disrupt the stability, the balance, the dynamic balance uh, that we already have, uh, but contribute to more stability, more security, more cooperation among us. Mm. And it's a challenge for ASEAN. Last year it was Indonesia, this year is Cambodia, yeah. 2013 will be Brunei, mm. 2014 will be Myanmar. Myanmar. Taking the turn to lead ASEAN, mm. Malaysia will have 2015, the year that we will become community. Malaysia will have challenges to mm. manage, Malaysia will have the leadership role to play, but each of us is making contribution into the, the ASEAN uh, journey. Mm. Can we then talk a little bit about Thailand? Mm. You know, it's as if the country um, has just gone through, has had a Why do you ask me about Thailand? I'm from ASEAN. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but you know, we also okay. relate you to okay. Thailand. Mm. Um, it's gone through a spate of bad luck. It's had mm. political upheaval. Yes. It's had natural uh, yeah. f disasters in terms mm. of flooding. Yeah. Where do you see Thailand going in 2012? I mean, it has a lot of work to yes. you know, rise from the proverbial ashes, I suppose. Yes. You know? Yeah. But, um, you know, uh, I've visited the country since the flood and I've been amazed mm. how quick they could rebound. The people are very resilient. They are expanding, they are, yeah. they are, expanding, they are uh, exporting, uh, and they are trying to attract uh, mm. or to create confidence among potential investors, keep the investors that are, that are already there. And they realize the fact that uh, they are a center of this production network in the region mm. and even... In, in some commodities, some sectors, they are uh, the center of this uh, production network around the world, you know, in computer parts, in automobile, mm. in, in various others. Uh, so uh, they, are, they are working together. They are trying to reassure the world, reassure themselves that they have this role to play and that they have a challenge to, to, to meet. Um, I think they will pull through. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they have their fundamentals are still very, very good. Agricultural country, no need to import. There's not going to be a food shortage in yeah. spite of the long flood. Uh, productivity is coming back. Um, over a thousand factories that have been inundated by the, mm. the floods are now operating. So um, uh, I think for them, uh, I think they realize that the framework of ASEAN, the ASEAN economic community uh, is, is extremely critical and I think they are going to put their emphasis on that and um, they, will, they will manage uh, their challenges. Mm -hmm. Country needs to heal, uh, yes, like you said, economic, I mean, political confrontation, divisiveness, economic difficulties, the, the, the difference between the countryside and mm. the urban areas, yes. Bangkok and the rest of, of, the, of the country. All these things need to be managed, but it's also a lesson to all ASEAN mm. countries that development has to be equitable, development has to be inclusive, yeah. that um, you have to take care of, of the, the larger portion of your population and it cannot be too different mm. and the gap cannot be too wide unless, uh, I mean, uh, or, or else you will have tension and confrontation and violence among you. And they have realized this. They are right. going through a, a very difficult process of reconciliation, but they know it and mm. they're going to do it their way. And uh, I think ASEAN is encouraging, giving moral support, get your, get your acts together. Rallying behind You are them. important to ASEAN. Mm. You are the founding member of ASEAN. You know, ASEAN was born in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. So it's important. And it's at the crossroad of every direction mm -hmm. you look at. You know, north, south, yeah. east, west, corridors, uh, connectivity that we are mm. building. On the mainland, Thailand is right in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's important in that sense. And uh, from there, we are working on connectivity of maritime ASEAN. Two states of Malaysia is very much maritime, mm -hmm. you know, Sarawak and Sabah. Bon and Sabah. And then large chunk of ASEAN population is maritime, you know, 
Indonesia, mm. the Philippines, Brunei. So we are working on our connectivity on the mainland is Thailand, on the in the middle, uh, in the maritime ASEAN, certainly Indonesia is the, the major magnet and weight. So we have to work together. And my final question to you, yes. Doctor. Um, how do you see the global movement of moderates, something that has been um, endorsed by ASEAN, mm. helping this region move forward in mm. terms of um, political diplomacy and foreign policy? Well, I think the fact that we have been able to achieve a high level of stability, of peace, of accommodation among ourselves, very diverse, mm. uh, is already recognized. Um, we do not have to make an effort to practice right. moderation. Mm. It is in our character, it is in our genes, our in, in our DNAs. I think that is uh, recognized. And a forum like uh, the Global Movement of Moderates, in, in, initiated by the Prime Minister of Malaysia, uh, I think has two objectives. One is, of course, to project that sense of moderation to the world, to the global community. And the other one is to remind ourselves that uh, we are the region of moderates. Uh, we need to uh, work together more in order to make sure that uh, together uh, on, the, on, the, on the platform of 600 million mm. 10 economies, we can go out to the world and help project our ways, our values, our norms, and our sentiments. And I think the world is paying attention. Uh, from the very beginning, I believe that all these civilizational clashes, quote in quote, everywhere, West and East, West and Islam, the road to accommodation and to reconciliation mm. may very well run through Southeast Asia, run through ASEAN. Malaysia has been one of the effective models of reconciliation, right. of uh, you know, moderate um, policies to accommodate, to help to bridge the gaps among and between different uh, communal groups. Mm. So uh, it, it's, very, um, it's very rightful, it's very reasonable that Malaysia would want to help project this character of ASEAN, of itself, to the global community because it has achieved a certain level mm. of uh, what you call integration, accommodation, uh, mutual respect here in Malaysian modality. Cannot be export just like that to the world, but at least it can be a, a role model yeah. and an inspiration. Somewhere to start. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure. Thank you.